Hi, I'm Calvis Yonrice, and I'm the Director of Business Development at IPS. In this video series titled How He Fixed It, we'll be going over a number of interesting can-making challenges our team of service professionals has experienced in the field. In this first video, we'll be talking about a dome profile variation challenge. So let's start from the beginning and build our knowledge base. So what is a dome? We've all seen it, the bottom of the can, in the 2D profile looks like this, and this is the dome of the can. So the dome is formed inside of the body maker when the cup drops in and the punch forces it through a redraw die and a series of ironing dies, changing the can to its final diameter through the redraw die and thinning the metal to its final height before which it hits the domer and strips off of the punch and exits the body maker. So to talk about the significance of the dome shape, I've found a video clip online from a video titled The Ingenious Design of the Aluminum Beverage Can. You can actually find the link to this video in the description of our YouTube video. So I'll go ahead and let this play. A dome is an arch revolved around its center. The curvature of the arch distributes some of the vertical load into horizontal forces, allowing a dome to withstand greater pressure. And so why the dome is so unique is because we don't want when the can is pressurized for the dome to reverse. In essence, if this were the dome of the can, we don't want it to reverse in this direction. And if that is our goal, then the dome is the ideal shape. When compared to a flat bottomed can, you would need much more material in the flat bottom to keep it from reversing when compared to the dome shape. Another thing worth talking about on the bottom of the dome is identification. So you will see two numbers on the bottom of the dome, and these numbers represent the line number on the left and the body maker number on the right. These are unique numbers to each body maker that help for troubleshooting in the can plant. So let's talk about some important features of the dome profile. So first off, the dome profile is a complex shape. So it is not a single diameter, but it is multiple diameters in the final shape. And it is designed specifically to withstand internal pressure requirements. Now, a typical measurement that is taken for quality purposes is the dome depth measurement. And dome reversal tests assure that the dome performs as intended. So in this video, which I'll play in a moment, we actually see a dome reversal gauge in action. And so this gauge is sold by Versatile. And we have a link to Versatile's website in the description of this video and they sell a line of high quality QC gauges for the can manufacturing industry. And so the dome reversal test pressurizes the can and it actually measures at which pressure the dome reverses. A typical spec is about 90 PSI and so the dome profile is important because if it is not as it should be the dome reversal may come before the pressure requirements. So I'll go ahead and let this play. And that is what a reversed dome looks like. And so let's go over a couple of components of the domer. And before I dig into this, I want to talk a bit about Pride Engineering. Throughout this video, we have a number of resources that Pride has allowed us to use in helping describe what is happening. Pride is the industry leader in domers or bottom formers, as they call them, as well as tool packs for the body maker and a number of other things. If you haven't visited their website recently, I highly recommend it. It is pridecan.com. Again, this is going to be in the description of this YouTube video but lots of great resources and great ways to understand all of their advanced technologies for the can making industry.
So let's look at a couple of the components that are important to understand. First off, this is the punch body shown here. We also have the punch nose. And here we have the aluminum can. On the domer assembly side of things, we have the dome plug or the domer die. And we have the dome plug support on which the domer die is mounted. And here we have the clamp ring. Finally, we have the donut spring here in the back. So watching this animation, we're going to go over a couple of factors that affect dome depth or that control dome depth. So the first one is tooling geometry. So there's three main things. So the first one is the punch nose, as we see here. The second one is the domer die. And a component of that domer die that's important to notice here is the flange. And that's important because the third uh, piece of tooling geometry that's important is the clamp ring. And it's important that the clamp ring bottoms out at the uh, domer die flange. The second component that it's worth talking about is over travel. So as we see, the domer die and clamp ring actually move backwards. And over travel is defined as the gap between the cylinder housing and the outer housing. So we can actually see the over travel right here. This gap is the over travel that we're talking about. And in this animation, uh, this sensor right here is actually part of uh, Pride's uh, Guardian system. So they have a portable Guardian as well as a Guardian 2, which measures over travel. So it's very important to consider over travel uh, when talking about dome depth. And finally, there is spring back. And so spring back is when the can bottom is formed the metal will actually return slightly back to its original shape. So it won't 100% be the shape when the punch nose is in contact with the domer tooling. There will be a slight level of spring back. And spring back, uh, how much it spring back, is controlled by a number of factors. There's metal characteristics, there's tooling, and then there's also the force applied by the donut spring during over travel. And so these donut springs come in four different um, varieties. And you could talk to Pride about which donut spring is best for your application, but they apply different levels of resistive force. And those different levels um, allow you to set the dome. So spring back is the third factor about the dome forming that we wanted to talk about. So now that we have a good fundamental understanding of what a dome is and how a dome is formed, let's talk about the actual problem that our service professional experienced. So at the plant, they were experiencing dome profile variations. And so the dome depth was out of spec and the body maker and line ID were not visible on the dome of the can. And so common reasons for dome depth variation could include worn donut springs, coolant venting problems, domer maintenance issues, and even tooling issues. In this particular situation, the over travel was assumed to be incorrect so the plant ground the domer spacer so we've already looked at this diagram but let's add a couple of new components to it so this represents where the domer door would be this obviously is the body maker side and this is the outside of the body maker the domer assembly is mounted to the domer door and there are domer spacers right here and so by grounding or taking material off of the domer spacer, it moves the entire domer assembly to the right and increases the over travel. And so in this case, it did indeed increase the dome depth. And that was the result. 
it eliminated dome spec variation. But eventually, down the line, they began experiencing fractured bottoms. And so fractured bottoms are typically caught in the light tester or vision inspection, but inevitably some make it into the field and result in leakers or when product leaks out of the fractured bottom in the field. So how did he fix it? What was the root cause? Before we dig into this, I want to give you a bit of background information about our service professional, Bert, who told us about this problem. Bert is a front-end specialist that is an expert on a number of front-end pieces of equipment, including cuppers, body makers, and trimmers. Bert speaks English and Spanish fluently and has been in the can manufacturing industry since 1978 when he started with stand-in can making systems eventually transitioning on to Ball Corporation, and Bert has been part of the IPS service team since 2011. So let's look at the problem again and see what actually happened. So we had dome profile variation, and as a result, the plant ended up grinding or taping material off of the domer spacer, moving the domer assembly towards the punch increasing the dome depth. And they did, in fact, eliminate dome spec variation, but they also added stress to the body maker. So why did this happen? Why was there stress added to the body maker? And to dig into this, we need to look a bit deeper into how a body maker is made up. So, the body maker drive has a number of moving components that all have bushings. And bushings are wear parts, and bushings need to be tight in order to have the proper motion inside of the body maker. So bushings that are worn can result in play or slack in the drive. And there's a number of bushings throughout the body maker drive that all can be affected. And in this particular case, this was the issue. This is why the dome spec variation existed. So by adjusting the domer position, they were treating the symptom and they were not treating the root cause. And so even though the dome specs were corrected, with enough added stress to the system, eventually the weakest link would break. And that could be the domer, it could be the slide yoke, or it could be the primary connecting rod. And once the weakest link is damaged, it results in heat and vibration and eventually tooling misalignment, which led to fractured bottoms and eventually leakers in the field. So how did Burke fix the situation? First off, he performed a body maker service. So of course he replaced the worn bushings but it's also important to point out that basic maintenance is very important. And so doing things like cleaning the hydro lube and flow orifices uh, helps prevent future misalignments and premature wear on drive components. So regular maintenance and service is extremely critical. So after the body maker service was performed, he adjusted the domer tooling to specifications following the Pride SOP, which is very detailed and leads to very good results, which indeed was the case here. The final result was a corrected dome profile spec, the correct depth, as well as body maker IDs visible. If you learned anything from this video and enjoyed it, please like it on YouTube. And if you have any colleagues or coworkers that you think would like watching this video, please share it or forward the email. And if you need any on-site support, know that IPS has a team of can-making professionals, experienced and specialized, that can help with any of your service needs. So if you have any questions, please give us a call, shoot us an email, or visit our website. Thank you for watching.